My name is Allison Abramo, and I work to promote equitable hiring for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Texas. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about one area where equitable hiring of this underrepresented group can directly impact a business need in technology. When I submitted this presentation to the APSI conference many months ago, I saw this as a goal for many companies. But now with the impacts of COVID-19 on the technology needs of almost all business types, I see this really as an imperative. Looking at tech talent now, it goes far beyond the demand in just large tech companies like Apple or Google. We're becoming increasingly more reliant on tech labor as that spreads into other industries. Companies need workers with tech skills to help them grow and innovate regardless of what industry they're in. And this need has grown so swiftly that the typical hiring models have fallen behind the need and can't keep up with demand. Even with the widespread impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on employment in the US, the shortage remains. There's an increased demand for tech talent as more companies pivot to remote work and with that needing things like increased cybersecurity. Additionally, a slowdown in recruiting as a result of the crisis can affect future pipelines. Now, there are some solutions like expedited training programs aiming to quickly reskill the current workforce to meet demand, but I think that companies need to be more creative in how they address this challenge. So when we're looking at neurodiversity, we see that that concept is becoming increasingly more prevalent in mainstream conversations. Neurodiversity is the idea that neurological differences, often associated with conditions like autism, ADHD, and dyslexia, are not abnormal. They're just variations of the human brain. These differences are not a disease to be cured, but a normal variation that should be celebrated. And I think where we should be seeing more of these conversations is around employment. Companies are growing internal DEI initiatives to attract, retain, and support talent from many underrepresented groups. However, only a handful of companies across the US are looking to specifically leverage neurodiverse talent and support it. So for the remainder of my presentation, I'm gonna focus down specifically on autism when I'm talking about neurodiverse candidates. Um, generally, people with autism bring things to the table like creative thinking, focus and attention to detail, and commitment and loyalty. And if you're thinking about those attribu attributes through a hiring lens, then you've basically hit on a perfect candidate. For companies like Microsoft and SAP, who specifically support and leverage that neurodiverse talent, those candidates are coming on board and they're making noticeable impacts. For other companies, they're missing out on that talent. I think that there's a logical fit between the tech talent shortage and neurodiverse candidates. So if there's this logical fit, then why are companies still missing out on this talent pool? I think the answer is in the current hiring system. Now there are flaws in the typical hiring system, especially with large companies that all applicants experience. And these flaws can lead to companies missing out on potentially great candidates. The difference for neurodiverse candidates is that these aren't just occasional obstacles. The typical hiring system is a consistent barrier to employment. Unfortunately, a majority of adults with autism are either unemployed or underemployed, despite having advanced degrees or in-demand technical skills. And I wanna look at three typical barriers in that process for candidates with autism. Looking first at the application process. One common barrier I see for candidates with autism is in the job posting itself. Through my work, I have seen countless individuals not apply to jobs because they don't fit 100% of the desired qualifications that are written in that job posting. Autism is often characterized by concrete thinking. And so a highly qualified candidate may not even be applying to your job because of how they interpret it. So you're missing out on talent. Next, we can look at the interview process, often the biggest barrier for people with autism. Autism has impacts on communication and social interactions. In the typical interview process, 
It's a short social interaction with a heavy emphasis placed on those skills. Somebody who gives short to the point answers, maybe has a flatter affect or struggles to make eye contact can be quickly discounted despite having desirable technical skills. Another step where candidates are lost. And that then feeds into the candidate evaluation, the final barrier. When recruiters and hiring managers are tasked with choosing between two candidates that have similar technical skills, they're gonna choose the candidate who demonstrated a better fit for their culture. And this makes sense as a hiring practice. The problem comes because the recruiter is making that decision with limited information. A candidate with autism due to those communication and social deficits may not effectively show their authentic selves during a typical interview. A strong neurodiverse hiring program is designed to eliminate these barriers so companies can effectively tap into this qualified talent pool. talked a little bit about talent shortage, about neurodiverse candidates, and what barriers are currently halting that connection. Now, hopefully, is a time when you're thinking about how you can effectively tap into neurodiverse candidates at your company. Having a hiring program as part of your company's d &I initiatives will give you a dedicated talent pipeline and structures to support those employees. And when you're looking to start a hiring program, these are some key areas to think about when you wanna develop an effective and sustainable program. First, you wanna look at your current business strategy and think about how this program fits into your overall strategy. Your program should not be a feel-good charity initiative. Consider why you're motivated to create a neurodiverse hiring program. Does your organizational culture value equal opportunity employment? Do you have a need for talent that will innovate? Or do you have a shortage of qualified talent? Next, consider how, who can help to execute this program. These programs can start at any level internally. However, a collaboration between external and internal partners is needed for successful implementation and sustainability. <coughs> Think about who will lead the program, what existing internal groups can you leverage, and what external supports and resources do you have that can support the program. After you've begun to gather a team, next look at building the business case for your neurodiverse hiring program. Without executive support, your program will not get past the planning stage. When you're thinking about the value of the program, it's not enough to just think about the social impact. You need to consider how this program fits with your company's KPIs and strategy. Finally, with your team and business case in place and executive support on your side, you can consider the scope of your program. A pilot can help you refine your recruitment, assessment, and onboarding practices so you can ensure your program will be sustainable and scalable. So I'll wrap up by talking a bit about the success we saw in our pilot with Dell Technologies. <clears throat> in 2019, my organization, the Arc of the Capital Area, partnered with Dell Technologies to pilot their neurodiverse hiring program in Central Texas. They la Dell launched their pilot in Massachusetts offices in 2018. It was very small, but had great success. And with that success, Dell looked to then pilot this at their headquarters in Round Rock, Texas, outside of Austin. The initiative was spearheaded by Dell's ERG for employees with disabilities. <coughs> Excuse me, true ability. And the Arc of the Capital area came in as an external partner to aid in recruiting for and running the program. The program is designed as a two week experience for candidates with the goal being an extended interview process that allows for skills-based hiring. During this program, candidates get to experience culture at Dell and frequent interactions with hiring managers are, you know, something that happens. We're able to be deliberate in how we facilitate those interactions between hiring managers and candidates so that we have people with similar skills and interests. <coughs> and those interactions 
allow for candidates to show more of their authentic skills or selves. In addition to networking, candidates participate in soft skills training so they can be successful in a corporate environment. And there's a group technical project that gives them the opportunity to demonstrate their technical skills. At the conclusion of our 2019 pilot, six of the nine candidates were selected for paid internships within Dell. The pilot was small, but had a huge impact. All six interns have been converted into full-time roles at Dell, and they've been working there for over a year. They have time and again performed above and beyond in their roles. They're active in many of Dell's ERGs and have become advocates for other neurodiverse employees already working at Dell. And in response to that pilot, we've seen a commitment from Dell to continue and scale this initiative, an increase in neurodiverse candidates wanting to work at Dell, and interest from other companies in the area to start their own programs. I think that when a neurodiverse hiring program is designed well to support sustainability and scalability, that they can provide that dedicated tech talent pipeline that companies are hunting for. And I really hope that companies are starting to move in that direction. Thank you.